everyone. My name is Amanda Johnson. I'm the Chief Development Officer for the ASXL Rear Research Endowment Foundation, and we're delighted to have you join us for this session, an introduction to ASXL-related disorders. Today, we're going to cover the very basics of ASXL-related disorders, uh, genes, DNA, and how a change to the ASXL genes can result in boring opitz syndrome, shashi Pena syndrome, or bainbridge roper syndrome. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the R Foundation. We are focused on advancing the understanding of ASXL genes and improving the care of people living with an ASXL syndrome. And that encompasses all three of the ASXL related disorders, boring opitz syndrome, shashi Pena syndrome, and bainbridge roper syndrome. For families and caregivers, we provide education sessions like this one, an online resource library, and the ASXL Family Conference, which we host in person and will continue to host in a hybrid format going forward starting in 2022. For research and healthcare providers, we provide the ASXL Professional Network, which is a growing network of medical professionals and researchers, and we help connect them to each other and to families as well. We help fund the ASXL Patient Registry, which is hosted at UCLA. It's like a library of uh, biological samples and research information about patients and families that help our research community learn more about ASXL-related disorders. We also provide research grants, which is providing funding to better study ASXL-related disorders and ASXL genes. And we also host the ASXL Research Symposium, which is an important opportunity to bring the research community together to connect with each other and learn more. So the best thing that you can do to advance research is join the ASXL Patient Registry. There's information here on the screen on our website and the direct email for the folks at UCLA who can uh, share more information with you about how to join the registry, uh, both the questionnaire or providing a, a biological sample uh, to house in the biobank there. And we're also looking for folks to get more involved with us. You can host a fundraiser on Facebook, you could make a donation directly. And we're also powered by volunteers. We would love to have you join us. You can learn more on our website under the Get Involved section. And now I'm gonna turn it over to our speaker today, Dr. Vishnu Kadapa, who will introduce himself and tell us more about ASXL related disorders. Thank you, Dr. Kadapa. Thanks so much, Amanda, for that introduction. Uh, my name is Vishnu Kadapa and I'm happy to be here. I'm a child neurologist at the Children's Hospital in Philadelphia. And my clinic focuses on genetic disorders that affect the brain and the central nervous system, including ASXL related disorders. And I'm happy here to, to talk to uh, the audience about uh, a, uh, provide basically a, a primer into genetics. Uh, this video is probably gonna be most helpful for families and, and caregivers who have recently had either a child or a loved one uh, recently been diagnosed with an ASXL related disorder. So we wanna provide some basically some definitions uh, for DNA and genetics uh, so that uh, when you go to your continued doctor's appointments, you'll have a better understanding uh, for what we mean when we're using certain terms. All right, so we can get started with the overview. Uh, so we'll first be talking about genes in general. Uh, what do we mean when we talk about a gene? We'll briefly talk about the ASXL family of genes and then finally, we'll provide an introduction into ASXL related disorders. There's already uh, quite a few wonderful videos on the ARRE website uh, about the different ASXL related disorders. Uh, but this introduction uh, will serve to basically just give a broad overview. And, and we'll ask the audience to please refer to those wonderful websites already on the website, uh, or refer to those videos already on the website for further details. Okay, so first, what are genes? Um, so before we talk about genes, uh, we'll go to the next slide. We first need to take a step back and, and talk about our genetic makeup or DNA. Uh, so what do we mean when we talk about DNA? DNA is our basic genetic makeup. Uh, this is the substance in our bodies that tells our bodies how to grow and, and how to develop. Uh, you can see here in this picture in this beautiful young girl, DNA tells um, her growing body what color her hair should be. Um, it tells her heart how to develop into a heart, how her bones are to develop into her bones. It provides those basic instructions that tell each and every cell and each and every organ in the body how to develop. Uh, it's no coincidence uh, that Amanda and I have included this uh, picture of a cookbook here. Um, and it, it's, it's an easy analogy, I think, uh, to DNA. Just as a cookbook provides recipes, that is instructions 
for a variety of dishes, DNA provides those basic instructions in each and every organ of our body into, into how to develop into an organ and, and also how that development should change over time. Next slide. So again, we wanna emphasize this point, genetic material is made of DNA and almost each and every cell in our body has DNA. Our, our body is essentially a, a bunch of different types of cells um, and, and, and each of these cells have instructions or DNA that tell it how to develop into that particular type of cell. So for example, we have cells in our heart that, that tell it how to develop into a heart. We have neurons, or, which is a special type of cell in our brain that tell it how to develop into a brain. And those instructions, as you can imagine, are absolutely critical in, in, in telling um, each and every organ how to develop into that organ. Uh, whenever, we ref whenever we use the word genes, what we're referring to are particular sequences of DNA. Uh, so DNA is kind of the umbrella term. Um, and then when we, when we zoom in into the DNA, that's what this picture is trying to show here. There are, there, there are many, 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 many different sequences of DNA. And a particular sequence is called a gene. A gene is, to go back to our analogy in the cookbook, is that recipe. It's that, it's that particular set of instructions um, um, that, that are absolutely critical for the growth and development of our body. Amazingly, our body has 20,000 genes. That's a, such a huge number. It's like 20,000 recipes. And it's absolutely critical that each of those 20,000 genes um, uh, uh, be copied from generation to generation uh, appropriately and be able to be read appropriately uh, in each and every person. These genes carry instructions into how to make proteins which allow our body to function normally. So again, just to emphasize this, genes give us, give our bodies the instructions of how to develop into different parts of the body. Here we have here a cartoon of DNA and a, a cartoon of a heart, of lungs, and of eyes. And this DNA, which is present in every single, nearly every cell in our body, uh, provides those instructions to, pr to lead to a variety of different paths, you know, as diverse as a heart versus an eye versus a brain. These instructions are included in every cell in our body and are absolutely critical. Sometimes when DNA is, is being copied uh, from generation to generation to generation, um, there can be changes in the DNA. And in the vast majority of times, uh, there are no significant changes in the DNA, but sometimes the DNA changes can occur in very particular genes. So for example, ASX cell related genes. And uh, when this happens, this can lead to medical conditions sometimes. When we refer to the word variance, we're referring to differences in DNA from person to person. So here in this cartoon depiction, we can see person one is in green and person two is in purple. When we look at person one's DNA, so th this is just a sequence of letters, A, G, A, C, we can compare that to person two, which is A, G, A, T. So you can see that C has changed to a T. That's what we refer as a variant. A variant is a difference in DNA from person to person. Many times when these changes occur, it has no effect. Actually, most of the time when these changes occur, it has no effect on that we can discern on a person's growth and development. However, rarely, sometimes, when these DNA changes occur, they can lead to health problems or delays in development. Okay, so what do we mean when we use the word inheritance. Inheritance refers to the passing of information, of genetic information from parent to child, from generation to generation to generation. For each of these genes that I referred to earlier, we, we actually have two copies of them. One is inherited from our fathers and one is inherited from our mother. Um, and this inheritance is, is known as, um, is the way that genes are copied from generation to generation to generation. Sometimes uh, these variants in DNA can be inherited from parents and other times they can be what we call de novo or new in a child. Uh, so let's talk about each of those situations in a little bit more detail. 
So you can see uh, in, in, uh, on the left side for inherited, we have a person um, who is depicted in orange. In this situation, the change in the DNA or the variant in the DNA is inherited from generation to generation to generation. Other times, even though we inherit a, cop a copy of each gene from our mothers and our fathers, there can be changes in a person that were not inherited from a mother or a father. The this is what we refer to as de novo. So although it's in the genetic information, it wasn't necessarily inherited from a mother or a father. That is to say, not all genetic conditions are inherited. Some of them can occur new in a child. Okay, now that we've provided some, a few basic definitions, why don't we now talk about specifically what is the ASXL family of genes? The ASXL family of genes are a set of three genes, ASXL1, ASXL2, and ASXL3, that play very important roles in the regulation of DNA in our bodies. So ASXL proteins bind DNA and can regulate the expression of many, many different genes in the body. As you can imagine, of the 20,000 genes in our body, each of them have very, very different roles. And these three genes, ASXL1, ASXL2, and ASXL3, actually are um, uh, kind of like uh, quarterbacks in that they regulate the expression of other genes in the body. They regulate the expression of other genes in the brain, in the heart, in the kidneys, and a wide variety of organs. And that's why uh, when we see children who have ASXL-related disorders, they can have a wide variety of organs affected. Variants in ASXL genes lead to changes in the way many, many other genes are regulated. And that's why we see such a wide variety of signs and symptoms. So again, our uh, ASXL family of genes has three members, uh, and these are cartoon depictions of where each of them are located, ASXL1, ASXL2, and ASXL3. Um, as we're, we're finding more and more children uh, who have ASXL-related disorders, we're realizing that these uh, changes in these genes actually lead to a spectrum of disorders that are overlapping. We're realizing as time goes along that uh, more and more of these children have, uh, can have similarities in which organ systems are affected and how they are affected. And as we identify more and more children with ASXL-related disorders, which is why the, the registry and the, and the bank is, is so critical, uh, we'll be able to identify what makes each of these uh, disorders unique, but also uh, what brings them together. So finally, we'd like to close by providing a brief introduction to ASXL-related disorders. We'll first start off by talking about boring opiate syndrome, which is caused by pathogenic variants and ASXL1. When we use the term pathogenic variants, what we're referring to are changes in DNA, which again are variants, that are disease-causing. Uh, some people also refer to this as mutations. Mutations in pathogenic variants or disease-causing variants, these are all the same terms. Uh, we, we currently think that uh, ASXL1 uh, uh, pathogenic variants and ASXL1 affects about 150 to 200 people globally. And uh, we call this a syndrome. Uh, what, by the word syndrome, we mean that there are a group of signs and symptoms in, in these children. And, and some of these signs and symptoms include uh, particular head shape changes. Uh, so for example, the, the forehead can sometimes be a bit more triangular. Uh, we can see birthmarks sometimes in our children with ASXL-related disorders. Uh, boring kid, children with boring opiate syndrome uh, can have prominent eyes, and they can also have a cleft lip or cleft palate. Uh, they can have thick hair. Um, two of the most probably uh, prominent symptoms that many parents will look for are that there they are prominent feeding difficulties, especially early in life, and there can be respiratory difficulties, things like obstructive sleep apnea. Developmental delay is also a very common feature. And as children get older, or, or we can, we, we, and we're able to do IQ testing, we, we see that there is some component of intellectual disability as well. Uh, and also very common in children with boring opiate syndrome is epilepsy.
pathogenic variants and as it comes to release the Dr. Pena syndrome. This affects a fewer number of people, probably about 15 people globally. And this is characterized by a, a constellation of symptoms, including large head, uh, birthmark can be present. Uh, these children can typically have uh, lower set ears. Uh, they typically uh, don't have as their, their growth and their uh, body size and, and uh, growth parameters aren't as affected uh, as boring Ovid syndrome. Um, children with pathogenic variants in A6L2 also have developmental delay and can have intellectual disability. Uh, they can have a couple of other uh, organ systems affected, including uh, we we're finding that some children can have bone disease, they can have low bone density. Uh, we also find you know, in hypoglycemia or low blood sugars that can occur in younger children. And this seems to get better with age and the few people that have been identified. Okay, and finally, uh, pathogenic variants in ASXL3 leads to brain bridge Roper syndrome. This affects up to about 300 people globally. Uh, these children have the characteristic facial features also. They can have a prominent forehead, arched eyebrows. Um, they also have feeding difficulties, um, as we see in uh, boring open syndrome. Uh, seizures um, can be seen in children with brain bridge Roper syndrome. Uh, they can also have autistic features, um, including hand flapping or uh, rocking behaviors. Um, these children can also have developmental delay and intellectual disability. And finally, we'll close with, with a question that we get asked uh, frequently, which is why is there such a wide spectrum of, of variability in asexual related disorders? So, so for example, um, if, if, if parents uh, of children with uh, boring open syndrome talk, they may find that uh, some children seem to be more severely affected in specific domains as compared to others. Why is that? Well, from what we understand about uh, ASXL related disorders, um, we, we, we know that, uh, that uh, changes in these in ASXL genes uh, can lead to these particular syndromes that we just discussed. However, what we don't know yet is if there is what we call a genotype phenotype correlation, that is, do particular changes in, for example, ASXL1 predict a specific phenotype? Um, but it is very possible that different types of variants might lead to these variable presentations. Uh, so, number one, the, the number one cause for why there's probably a wide spectrum is that every change in the gene isn't the same. Different variants may lead to different clinical presentations. The second major reason is, is that um, not only is the ASXL gene important and the change in that gene are important, but the background is also important. That is, all of the other genes and whatever variants are present in those genes might modulate, might affect the severity at which the change in the ASXL gene is expressed. Um, so so it's, it's very likely that other genes outside of the ASXL genes can modulate uh, or modify uh, the, the, the degree to which a change in the ASXL gene is, is leading to a disease condition. All right, so you know, we, we hope you found this introduction um, helpful. Uh, we hope we were able to provide a few basic definitions for what genetics is and what are some of the common terms that we use. Uh, again, for, for more in-depth videos about each of these conditions, I encourage you to to the ARRE website. Um, we encourage you to connect with us through all the ways, including Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you, Dr. Padaba. I really appreciate your overview today and hope families found this helpful. And we'll just close by thanking everybody for joining us. And uh, if you found this information helpful today, we invite you to visit our website for more information. And of course, we would appreciate your support at ourfoundation.org slash donate. Thank you so much, Dr. Kadapa. Thank you.